the branding and everything that's been done on this campus, uh, I always look to West Georgia and say, hey, we need to do that in our community at Kennesaw State. So you should be proud of how the branding and all those things. See, I even wore a tie today for y'all. See, I didn't wear black and gold. I tried to fit right in with everybody today. But before I get started, uh, I want to I wanna, a raise of hands of people that think, everybody's sport management major in here, right? All right, now they're there. Okay, good. Now is, who wants to be in college athletics? Raise your hand if you think you want to be in college athletics. Oh, that's a good, good, good. Okay, who wants to be in anything else of Except college athletic, raise your hand. Oh, okay. Oh, they want to be on the dark side. Okay, all right. All right, okay. Well, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about, uh, a little bit about me, uh, not really me, but my journey, because everybody's gonna go through a journey here. And a little bit about when I was sitting in your chair, uh, and a little bit about if you want it, you can have it. Because I'm living proof. I am living proof. And that's what's great about sport management. And I'm going to explain a little bit about that. Because the reality is, you've got to want to get after it, right? Right? Say yes. OK. You've got to want to get after it. OK? This is not a profession that you sit back and let things happen. OK? So if you're not proactive, aggressive, go-getter, player, then hey, maybe this ain't the profession for you. But if you're passionate about anything in life, it starts there. It starts there. Because only you, I say, can pigeonhole you. Because you're going to say, well, I didn't have this, or I didn't go to this school, or I didn't do this, or I didn't do this thing. Well, you control. Control what you can control. So I'm living proof that you don't pigeonhole yourself. You can only pigeonhole yourself. No one else pigeonholes you. Excuse me. Okay, so I started, I went to UMass. I played football there. Okay? So I went to UMass, but I wanted to be an electrical engineer major. I wanted to be electrical, I wanted to be an engineer. And when you go to school, you know, you're in high school, you think everything that you want to do. But my parents wanted me to be an engineer. That was great. My dad's from the Virgin Islands and he builder and all this kind of stuff. So he's like, hey, you're going to be an engineer when you grow up. And I was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was strong in math. I was strong in science. I was African American. I'm still African American. I'm African American. <laughs> right? I'm just being honest with you, right? And at that time, they're looking for a lot of African Americans. I'm from New Jersey. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. No worries. All right. But at the same time, you know what I mean? I'm from New Jersey. And so I went Rutgers programs, engineering program. I had this idea of what engineering is going to be. I'm going to have a great job. I'm going to get a scholarship. All oh, this is, this is the perfect life. Okay. Then I got to school at UMass. And boy, if I can, can I say this on film? I got slayed in class, big time. I mean, I'm being honest with you. I mean, I was like, holy cow. You know, holy man, this is not, this is not anything. That I thought I wanted to do. And so I had a, I'll never forget it, Duncan McCray, my fullback friend, my fullback. I'm a defensive back, my fullback friend said, hey, you always talk about being sports or being behind it. And he said, hey, UMass has a great sport management program. And I said, are there any sport, what is a sport management program? This is 1992 now. Okay? So this, this degree, this discipline has evolved. Because back in my day, if you said that to somebody, they'd be like, what are you going to do? OK, so I went to UMass, went in the sport management program. And at that point, I knew that I wanted to get, I didn't know what it was. But I thought it was the glamour thing. I watch TV. We all watch. Who, who watched the game last night? Yeah, all of us did, or most of us did, right? And so I saw it was on TV, and I was like, I want to be a part. How do, you do, how do you be a part of that? How do you be a part of that? So marketing, fundraising, the glamorous positions of what it was. So anyway, I didn't do any internships. I didn't do what I needed to do. I was, you know, I thought, hey, you do the major, you go, you're going to get the job. 
And of course, I was playing football, so I was, go I was going to the NFL. You know I was going to the NFL, right? Right? I'm just being honest. So anyway, that happens. I get, don't do. I get into my last semester, and I decide, hey, I got to do an internship. And I got to really talk to my internship advisor. Now, in my world about to end, I'm not going to be playing after college. And I got I to gotta get ready. And I got friends left and right, some doing the internships, some not. Some getting jobs in the real world, some not. And when I mean the real world, I mean anything beyond being in athletics. OK, because it, it was chasing, you know, you, you go to college, you, you got bills, some of you. You know, you want to start your life, you want to have the car, you want to have the apartment, you want to stop struggling. And I had a lot of friends that fell wayside because they want, then they end up getting a job. And hear me when I say that, a job. And they were like, well, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to apply for some internships. So I had three offers, three internship interviews. Because I couldn't offer anything. I could talk my way into it, but nothing panned out. It was with, this, this is what's crazy about this. I interviewed with the Houston Oilers. Had anybody heard of them? That, that's way back. I'm dating myself, right? The New Jersey Nets. Where did these teams go? Right? And the NBA. And didn't get anything. So I ended up really moving to Georgia that summer. I picked up, told my mom I was never going to stay home. And I went to Georgia. Of all the places, the Olympics were coming. This is the summer of 92. The dome opened. I was one of the first people to ever go in that Georgia dome. Five hours. You could walk through it when it opened. Okay? I sent three, this is going to really blow your, blow your mind, 350 letters out to sports organizations in the state of Georgia. We didn't have email. So I had to go to the library, and there was a book about all the jobs in, a, in athletics, college, everything. And you, you, go to, you, you go to different ones. College, go to Georgia, and it gives you a whole list of everything. So I wrote everybody, and I knocked door to door. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. I ended up selling cars in Douglasville. There's a Honda place. If you ever go there, they get good deals on Hondas. <laughs> I sold cars for two months. Sold cars for two months. How you doing today, OK? All right. Good, good. I sold cars for two months until I got a call from my sport management program because I had seen my advisor two times and for some reason, he liked me. Harold Vandeswag, one of the first people to ever create sport management program at UMass, called me and I was on a lot, on a parking lot going, oh, I can't believe I just did five years of school. And nothing against selling cars, but I know I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. Some people make a great living and they're great at it, but that wasn't my call. And I'm going, oh my gosh, another person calling online. Oh, it was a cold call. And I was selling units. I was selling 13 cars a month. So I was making money. And I was sitting there going, oh my gosh. And it was Carl Vanders went, hey, we got an internship in Salt Lake City. And I said, I'll take it. He said, hey, you got an interview for it. I said, I'll take it. He said, you know where Salt Lake City is? I was like, man, Utah. Ooh, Utah. Yeah, you know, what do you know about it? I did a report on it. Anyway, anyway I, went up to, I went to Salt Lake City for an interview, three day interview. Ended up getting the job. I was in, I finally got in college athletics. And I was doing finance, which at the time, that's not what I wanted to do, right? I told you I wanted to do marketing, the glamorous stuff. But I got in. And the AD that hired me is still the AD at Utah, the longest tenured AD in Division I, Dr. Chris Hill. OK, so I got into the finance area. Did all that. I had, a, I had a boss. I was 23 years of age. We went to our first bowl in 38 years. <clears throat> Some of y'all remember Jamal Anderson. Okay, he played for the Falcons. He was at Utah at the time. Mike McCoy, he's the head coach of San Diego Chargers. He was the quarterback. First bowl in 38 years. My AD and the president of the university goes, hey, can you and your guy, can you get your, your and do the travel package? and make a travel package. And I was 23, and we got 
10,000 people from Salt Lake City down to Tucson, Arizona to play Washington State, Drew Bledsoe. And I did bus trips. I had never done any of that before. We did 10, we had 15 buses for students. We had planes, we had it all. And I had a little Mac II. That's the size of your iPad now. That's the, the first Mac machine and a little screen like that. And I was typing away and we were doing all the reservations. And after that, I got my first job in the college athletic, my first full-time job as assistant director of finance. So I went from not doing internships to getting in and managing a $15 million budget overnight with no CPA, no degree in accounting. But when the AD brought me in there and said, hey, Vaughn, he said, I, I want to hire you. And I said, oh, so I'm getting excited going with Jesse. He said, I want to make you assistant director of finance. You'll be over the budgets, you'll be over in-house concessions, and you're going to start a licensing and royalty program for us. And I had no experience in any of those things. And what do you think I said? Okay. I'm not prepared. I said, yeah. I can do that. I'm your man. And I left that in the room and called my mom and said, what have I just done? <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. But I'm telling you that because it is about risk. It is about opportunity and not letting it slip through you. So when I did that internship, I did everything in that department. See, most people go to do their internship and then they just kind of work in their own little area, okay? But the internship is a time, a time to explore, a time to self-discovery, to say, I don't want to do that, or I want to do that. I want to do that, or I want to do that. So I did it all. I answered the phone for the secretary in the front. I did marketing. I did fundraising. I did tickets. I made hot dogs. But what I'm saying is, after being on that lot for a whole summer in Atlanta, and Atlanta's hot, selling cars, spending 13 hours on the lot trying to sell a car or two, I was like, I am not, I'm gonna take full advantage of my opportunity and really find out if this is what I want to do, or if this is what I'm called to do, or this is what I'm gonna be passionate about. Because really, it is about the passion. I wasn't getting paid. You know how much I paid? $18,000 a year to manage $15 million. I was making $18,000 decisions a day, every day. So I'm not here to tell you you don't make money. Well, don't make a lot. But I am here to say, what are you called to do? What is your passion? And I have a lot of friends they have a job, they have a car, they have the house. But I tell you one thing, they didn't go to the they wanted to go to the Final Four when I went. They wanted to go to that bowl game when I went. I impact lives every day. I wake up excited about work. I have a calm, passion. I love what I do. I don't look at it like work. I'm like, I want to be a five percent. Ninety-five percent of people, I believe it. Just have a job. I have a vocation. I want to be that person that has a vocation. That's why we respect coaches. That's why we respect teachers, professors. Because our you know, religious organizations, because they do it because they're passionate about it. So I would say, if we're gonna work, and in America, we work more than any other country in the world. We spend more hours at work than any other country in the world. If I'm going to work or do something, I'd rather do something that I love than something that's just making money. I want to make a difference. That's, that's, a, that's a lifestyle. Okay? So anyway, went to Utah, did that. Then I got bumped up to 24000 a year. That was a big bump. That was a big bump. I went from riding the bus to getting my first car. All right? And I did that. And I expanded my horizon at Utah. And I'll never forget, this is what's the neat thing about evolution of sports, evolution of business. Because Chris Hill said in 1993, we're going to be in a Pac-10 someday. And it's really neat to see Utah in a Pac-10 18 years later. Okay? 
So I did that. You build relationships. I'm in Salt Lake City. I definitely wasn't there for social reasons. There wasn't really anything to do for me. So not very diverse. <coughs> not very diverse at all. There was only a one other black administrator on that campus, African American. There's only one barbershop in town. I'm being honest with you. One barbershop? Imagine that. In Atlanta, there was around 20. No place to go out. I'm a young guy. What do I do? What is social life? But you got to give to get. You got to remember that. I'd rather pay my dues, and this is what it is about paying dues. Nothing against the generation coming up. But everybody thinks that things are going to be given to them. We're in an instant gratification time. You know, I look on my, I was on my tweeting, figuring things out, got information like this. But one thing that will never change is worth ethic and hard work. That will never change. Those that do it, those that give up are the ones that will get in the end. So I went to Utah anyway, decided that I was too good. I was really young. I was managing people and all this, making the, you know, they're about to get the Winter Olympics. We were part of that big part. I learned so much at Utah, exposing. I said, oh, it's time for me to apply for jobs. And I tell you this next part because it's important because relationships are important in every step. Relationships you think you don't have in this room or have in this room, I tell you, they might come back to help you or haunt you. 10 years down the line, never discount any relationship in any job or any place that you go. If you want to be in this profession, you're trying to expand your options. And in college athletics, because we work so long and work so hard, it's not like the real world when it's <coughs> bottom line. I'd rather put up with somebody that's gonna make the dollar and move the company away, move the company forward. But in college athletics, you spend a lot of time with people. So you're going to want to be around people you like. That's just a fact. Likeability, networking. Who knows you? Who can credibly stand for your personality? That's why you always say you want to, we need somebody, because somebody's going to call somebody and say, well, can, I, can this person be on my team? But I, but I like having them around. But it'd be a joy having them around, because we're going to spend 16 hours a day working with each other. I'd rather have somebody that is going to be a team player and somebody just produces and no one likes it. That's a fact. That's a fact. I'm just telling you reality. I'm not telling you this is the fact. That's the difference. So the only way I got a job at University of Toledo. Okay, I interviewed for a whole bunch of jobs. I really didn't know my what how where I was on the spectrum because I really wasn't an associate AD. I was a director of finance at the time. I left Utah and they didn't they didn't believe in those associate ADs. Uh, titles, and so I went to the University of Toledo, and I was associate AD in business affairs there. And how did I get there? Well, I got there because I applied for a job at Maryland University of Maryland. This is how I got the job. University of Maryland. I did get. I was a finalist. The person that was a senior associate, his name is Jamie Pollard. He's the AD at Iowa State right now. He goes, Vaughn, I can't hire you. You got too much experience. You do what I do. I was like, really? He said, you should be going for associate AD jobs. Next thing you know, he gets a call from Toledo. He said, who's on your short list? This guy. You got to look at this guy. That's how I got to Toledo, folks. Now, I got to Toledo. And what I learned at Toledo, it was a great situation, but it was a building situation. They had a, I went there because they had a million dollar deficit. I was 27 years old. And I said, hey, I want to be an AD, I think. I think. If I can go here and turn this thing around and get this thing right, well, if I can learn here, then I'd do it anywhere. And so I went there, but then I learned another thing. You've got to be in line with your leadership. I learned a valuable lesson. I was only there for 15 months. I'm not going to get into specifics, specifics. But you've got to be in alignment with your leadership. That's important, right? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna give value to my place. And you gotta decide where you fall on ethics, integrity, passion, fairness. And I'm a servant. 
So I'm about to, I'm about to serve. I know the football 